Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now the Anthem VIP demo, and it's very important that we call it a demo, because that's what Bioware and EA are saying, they're not calling it a beta test or a second alpha, no, it's a VIP demo. Now, I do want to quickly say that I think it's been named really poorly from a marketing stance, because the VIPs include anyone that has EA Origin and also people who have pre-ordered the game. So in EA's eyes, those are the only VIPs. No. When you've got a game that's had a rocky development like Anthem, any single solitary person that could potentially put their hand in a pocket and get money out to purchase your game is a freaking VIP. But that's just the marketing part of me which just gets really rattled by silly, silly uh, mistakes like this. But it's really kind of falling apart and mm, I'm going to go into those details. However, after I've gone into that, I'm actually going to talk about my personal experience on Anthem and what I think about the game and maybe where it's going to go going forward. So, with that said, this is an updated post that is actually on uh, the EA site as regards to some of the major issues that the demo is having. And it released a couple of days ago now and literally from the very start of it, everything just seemed to go wrong. Some people couldn't get past the title screen, people could get into it and then they would try and load somewhere and they'd just get an infinite loading screen. Other people would finally manage to get into games, uh, they'd get disconnected, booted out, uh, mobs would vanish right in front of them, huge rubber banding, uh, lag, uh, there were massive, massive problems. Now, this is bad. I mean, it really is bad, because when you're saying this is a demo, as in a demonstration <laughs> of what the game is going to be, uh, it doesn't paint it in a particularly good light, because there's a big difference between an alpha, a beta, and a demo. Now, sure, there's a bunch of companies that say, hey, beta test our game, and it's coming out in like one week, two weeks' time. That's not a beta test, that's a demo. But that's just how they're phrasing the game. They're never going to fix the issues uh, in such a short period of time. And of course, Fallout 76 being one of those major companies, the break it beta. <laughs> <laughs> Bethesda, you'd broken that game a long time before anyone else came along, trust me. So, uh, when you're saying that this is a demo, you are in essence saying, this is a finished product. This is a demonstration of the finished product. And although, yes, there is approximately four weeks until Anthem's launch, but that is just around the corner, are they going to be able, are Bioware going to be able to fix these massive issues that the game is having? And it even at the end of day one, actually got this response uh, from Chad Robertson uh, as regards to how the experience was. And he even starts off by saying, yesterday was rocky. This, of course, was written yesterday, so it's the day before for us now. The first day of our VIP demo weekend did not go exactly as we planned. And I want to share what happened. Now, a lot of people were speculating that some of it had to do with uh, servers and not getting enough servers. And this is the confusing part here because we have uh, Chad talking about in here, and I will link it in the description box down below so you can check it out as well. He talking about how it wasn't a server capacity issue or anything like that. However, they did stress that they were getting more servers uh, online to get people playing. He said that they did predict the numbers that were going to be hitting the uh, demo, but at the same time, they didn't. <laughs> so he kind of contradicts himself a little bit, saying it wasn't the servers, we had it all planned, we had it all prepared, but we weren't prepared. It's one of those facepalm times. But he then goes off into the platform connections, the uh, entitlements. You're going to get, I think, a... Uh, a little skin as a sorry uh, for it all, the infinite loads, and it goes into depth, uh, a little bit of depth, as regards to uh, what's going on, and then refers back here to the issues which are still ongoing. Now, these problems weren't on a specific platform, so it wasn't as if it was just affecting PC. They were affecting, uh, in, in fact, infecting, I think it's actually quite a good word, um, <laughs> PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And we can still see that as of 
the last posting of issues, there is still the infinite loading screen problem and the inability to get past the loading screen. Now, what is also a major concern here is not only has the uh, demo been broken to such a degree that it has, if you've seen where it was positioning on Twitch in terms of viewers, uh, it was so broken it went from very high up to, you know, whoosh, to getting knocked, uh, you know, considerably down with games like uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake still being up there like number two uh, throughout the course of the weekend. So what I'm trying to say is people's attention was waning elsewhere when there were so many problems with this demonstration. And on top of that, in about a week's time, we're actually going to have the public free-for-all demo. Where if you have a PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, you can just download it and get on it. And if it's had major problems with such a, you know, small proportion of who's going to be purchasing the game or potentially purchasing the game, uh, then the public demo could potentially be catastrophic. Because if the public demo has the same issues that this has been experiencing, then it could really turn people off. Bearing in mind, people were tentative about Fallout 76. I was kind of all, not so much all, yeah, I was all in because I pre-ordered the collector's edition. So I was pretty much all in with it. I had made a decision that I was already going to purchase Fallout 76 based off the fact that I love Bethesda games. And, I, you know, I love the Fallout franchise, Elder Scrolls franchise. And therefore, I believed that things were going to be okay. You know, maybe not perfect, sure, because it is... Bethesda, bug Thesda, but I did think, you know, it was going to be reasonable enough for me to be okay with my, you know, I'd be happy with my purchase and little things would get fixed. But when they put out that break it beta, the number of pre-orders that would have been cancelled by that is unreal. And we'll get to that in the second video today, as I'm going to go through the top 20 selling games of 2018 you'll be surprised where Fallout 76 ends on that one. So yeah, a, a beta or a from Fallout 76 standard or a demo from Anthem standard could have a serious impact on how many people actually purchase your product. And that could spell disaster if the public demo is anything like what this VIP one has been like. The only Saving grace for them is the fact that it has been a limited number uh, compared to what it could have been. And also, they have about, what, seven days? Uh, maybe four or five days, actually, to get this fixed for the free-for-all. So, with that said, I want to talk to you about when I played Anthem. And I put in quite a few hours. Why did I put in quite a few hours? Because um, I really quite kind of enjoyed the gameplay. I really did. Now, there is good and there is bad. Now, I say that the bad is um, I really didn't connect with any characters whatsoever. They came across as a bit boring, contrived, vanilla. Um, some were tryhards, you know, just like characters like, oh, dude, just back off, man. Um, and none of the characters particularly interested me uh, one bit. So that was concerning. Uh, because, you know, you still want a story to, to push this forward. One of Destiny's problems, of course, was the story was so all over the place. And, and, and the fact that they cut things out, changed things around, that you know, there's no cohesion to that story. And with Bioware being great storytellers, and I know they've said that they're not concentrating massively on the story, uh, that is actually Bioware's major strength, I would say. So to kind of have these characters and none really stand out to you, I was a bit disappointed by that. But the gameplay element, I really, really enjoyed. I thought it was fantastic. Um, getting out into, I think it's called a javelin. I think that's what the mech suit's called. Getting into one of those javelins and flying around the areas and engaging in combat felt really sleek. Uh, felt very intuitive, and that is what made me reload the demo again and again. What well, the alpha for me, again and again. Even though I was playing the same mission 
uh, multiple times was because of how slick I felt the gameplay was. I thought the shooting mechanics was very good. The movement was very good. The dodging was very good. Everything felt intuitive. I never felt like I was fighting the controls. And of course, when you can tweak and change uh, what's going on with your, your character in, in terms of customization, weaponry, blah, blah, blah. Um, it looks like there could be some really good fun in terms of creating builds for your various javelins and the um, the range of javelins that you, you can have as well. Now, I know people have been comparing this to like Destiny and whatnot, but I did feel in terms of gameplay that Anthem did put enough of its own personality, stamped enough of its own personality onto the product to make me think, no, this doesn't actually feel like a, a Destiny clone. This does feel like a game that has been created in third person with its own unique gameplay movements and functions. It looks spectacular. There were quite a few bugs when I played as well, and to see that they have actually carried on into the demo is also worrying. For me, there was like lots of loadout bugs, um, lots of lag bugs, disconnection bugs, and the menu screens were a bit annoying to navigate, but I don't know if that is because uh, it was actually matchmaking was a little bit broken. It could have easily been that. But yes, a very nice looking game. The particle effects are spectacular. The environments look absolutely amazing. And um, I want to give this a go. Seriously, I legit want to give this a go. Uh, I'm going to participate in the public demo next week. But it's a game that I'm, I'm more inclined on the I'm going to purchase side right now than not. But I think a lot will hinge on how the public demo goes uh, in a few days. Because if that is just completely broken, I might just say to myself, I'm interested, but I'm going to wait. And that is actually um, almost like a death knell for developers. Because if you wait, something else could come along. You know, you've got Metro right around the corner. Kingdom Hearts right around the corner and right now. So other games can easily take other people's attention away from what's going on. And just one further thing. We know from this demo that the um, balance is different. And also the economy of the game is different as well. I would say there is a little concern with the economy because we're dealing with EA. And uh, people that just say, well, it's only cosmetic microtransactions. I don't buy into that one bit. Because when you have a cosmetic microtransaction, it, A, it takes something out of the game. Or if you can still get that item through in-game work, they tend to make that in-game work very grindy and boring in an effort to push you to put your hand in your pocket and pay for that cosmetic microtransaction. And bearing in mind, this is a game that is a looter shooter. This is a game that you want to look cool. You want to look dapper in whatever you're dressed like on your javelin. And therefore, people could, you know, feel... Pre you know, you always find, sorry, that the, the better outfits uh, tend to find themselves with a price tag on them as opposed to gettable in-game. And we are dealing with EA. They have no ethics. They have no morals. Uh, they are shareholder-driven as opposed to uh, consumer-driven. They're anti-consumer. Uh, and, and that does concern me as well. And because we're not going to know also how that is going to take effect until the game's launched, again, it's leaning slightly towards, I'm looking to buy this and I'm interested in this, but I might wait. But uh, yeah, I mean, terms, like I said, in terms of gameplay... Great, great looking game. I thought it played really well. And if it works, it could be a lot of fun. Question is, if it works. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links there in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.